politics is always fun when something that most people didn't expect to happen, but that makes everybody excited, occurs. And that's what happened this week when Mitt Romney picks Paul Ryan to be his running mate. So this is my open invite to make a mea culpa and say a couple weeks here, I, a, a couple weeks ago here, I said there was no way that Paul Ryan was going to be the vice presidential <laughs> pick. Mitt Romney is too risk averse, and there was no way he was going to pick uh, the Wisconsin congressman. Obviously, I'm wrong. So you're uh, only totally wrong. I'm only <laughs> totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, so some of Jerry's uh, experience never gets pinned down on that precise yeah, prediction. No, 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 no. And by the way, if you don't remind people, they rarely remember. It. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. either way, what the pick did was it brought a lot more enthusiasm to a ticket and a race that I don't think we had seen a lot of enthusiasm for. It also elevated the conversation, mm -hmm. at least in some quarters, for a couple of days. We'll see how long that lasts. And then on the, the you know the downside for Mitt Romney, it gave Democrats something else to complain about uh, yeah. as far as the ticket is concerned. So, so I was up in, in Romney headquarters a bit this week, and so what they are excited about is they think they've got a guy who's young, who's exciting, who brings energy, who comes from a swing state, and who actually makes Mitt Romney a better campaigner because he seemed energized when he got on the stage mm -hmm. with Mitt Ryan. But you were in the other universe, you were in the Obama universe, and I, I assume they have an opposite feeling <laughs> on all counts, right? Very different view yeah. on all counts. They see him as a liability in terms, they don't see him as bringing to the table any of the constituencies in which Mitt Romney struggled with, such as women, mm. Hispanics, young voters, and basically their plan is to look at his record and tie his record to those specific constituencies and go in and narrowly address that. Although they're going to tie the Ryan budget to Mitt Romney anyway. Mm -hmm. Right, although, you know, it, before Mitt Romney could have said, well, I like the budget in principle, but I don't like all its pieces, and if I'm elected, we'll have to work things out. Now he's got the Ryan budget stamped on his forehead. There's no way they can get around it. Uh, you know, the budget wonk reporters like me are glad if this turns into a fight over <laughs> Medicare spending and stuff. It's right to our sweet spot. But I think it, it's a really interesting calculation by the Romney campaign that having someone who has a pretty specific for a national candidate uh, spending cut agenda. See, that's what I think is, is one of the things they think is the other asset, which is, okay, you may not like everything, but here's a guy who's got a specific plan with specific solutions at a time when cynical Americans think no politicians right. are even offering him any ideas. Absolutely, but I think the big issue there is whether or not Mitt Romney is actually going to stand by that plan. I mean, you've yeah. already seen him kind of distance himself. He did the 60 Minutes interview where he said, hey, oh, I've got a budget and we're going to run on that budget, kind of doubled down on that point in a round of interviews the next day. So this is, you know, it's a, it, Mitt Romney has not he, he kind of played the, he tiptoed around the Ryan plan during the primary. He expressed support for it right on the cusp of the Wisconsin primary when it mattered and when Paul Ryan mattered the most. And then he's since kind of backed away. So it'll be really curious to see what commitment he makes to it. The other thing about Ryan is it now allows the Obama people to tether Mitt Romney to Congress, which last yeah. I checked is at you know, as unpopular a level as it's ever, ever been. been. Yeah. Well, but more so it allows them to do what you were talking about, is they were already trying to tie this budget to Romney, and now that just makes their job so much easier. It was a little bit of a reach before, and now it's not, and now they can go through the budget piece by piece and pick out all of the things that are unpopular and tie them to Romney and, and use them and to highlight to specific voting groups. And it's not just this budget. I mean, you got to remember this is a guy who has given us, I think, three or four fairly sweeping budget blueprints going back to 2008, yeah. each one with different components that I think would be politically difficult for Republicans to defend. You know, there's a little bit of a myth about the Romney budget, which is that it's, he's a big deficit hawk. He's not really. I mean, he, his plan never really takes the deficit to zero. That's It's kind of attacking the deficit. You're but talking about Romney or Ryan? I'm sorry, Ryan. Right. Right. Ryan, Ryan is about cutting spending, but he also is not going to raise taxes. And so as a result, if you look at the trajectory that he's laid out, it doesn't show the budget coming to balance for decades. Uh, that's absolutely true. He also, uh, like Ronald Reagan and like Mitt Romney, wants to spend more on defense. And if you spend more on defense, you get bigger deficits unless you cut spending a lot somewhere else or raise taxes. And that's where Romney is really sort of, he's nailed down on, I'm going to spend more on defense. Yeah, absolutely. They seem to be kind of uh, birds of a feather when it comes to defense spending. In fact, the pre one of the first things that Ryan lays out in his most recent budget blueprint is his defense of increased defense spending. Right. Romney obviously has said that he wants defense spending yeah. to be around 4% of GDP, which you know, by some projections could mean $2 trillion more in spending over the next decade. So it really does run counter to this uh, deficits, uh, deficits right. matter message. Right. Yeah. It's a growth message, not a deficit yeah. well, reduction message. One thing message. that the Obama folks were, I was talking to someone senior in the Obama campaign, that they were saying is that with picking Ryan as a running mate, if you look at the debate that they're going to be having in the fall over budget issues and the deficit, that this 
even more so than before, and it makes it a gives who the winner, if it is to be Obama, a mandate on on those issues in a way that he may not have had if maybe, if, if maybe. Ryan depends wasn't. on how they run the campaign. Mm -hmm. If they really stick to the principles and don't get stuck in the you know arguments over fine points. Yeah, but the the argument everybody's going to get stuck in is Medicare, right? I mean, right. you saw that this week. It's like they went they they've, they've cruised past all the rest <laughs> of this and gone straight to Medicare, right? Right, and that and you know, if you're from the Obama campaign's perspective, this gave them an opening to the one constituency where Romney has done a lot better than yeah. than Obama has, which is elderly voters and you know, now they see a way to try and chip away at that lead and and they're doing that in states like Florida. But they don't, but they Romney, Ryan crowd has really come back swinging. Mm -hmm. and I c can't believe how much they were ready for this Medicare thing. Well, I mean, you'd, mm -hmm. you'd think that Paul Ryan's budget would increase spending on Medicare. <laughs> I have Paul Ryan's budget right here. It says Medicare, $205 billion less over 10 years than the president's budget. And and spending on the health care law is another $1.6 trillion. He does not want to spend more on Medicare than Barack Obama. But if you watch the ads, you never know that. I think the lesson, though, the Republicans have learned from having run on the Ryan budget for more than a year was not to talk about the Ryan budget. When he first <laughs> unveiled it in 2011, there was a big push, hey, we're going to tell voters what's in it. It. If you look at a lot of the ads, the Rom latest Romney ad being the perfect example, yeah. they, they're talking about anything but. So they're going to throw <laughs> well, the but, charge right up back at the president. They, well, yeah, that's the thing. They've figured out how to throw it back because they have this great, neat line in which they say, us cut Medicare? Barack Obama is going to cut $716 billion out of Medicare, which you love, mm -hmm. and spend it on something you hate, which is the Obamacare right. health care reform. Right. That's, but that's not going to build a mandate for cutting Medicare, no, which I, has to happen if we I have a budget deal. The Obama folks were a little bit slow on that. If you looked at the president was campaigning through, for three days in Iowa, and it took him three days to actually address Medicare in a reasonable way. That's a little surprising. They were going to get the Medicare anyway. I mean, at least everybody in Romney land believes, oh, well, we were going to get this. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to wait for Paul Ryan to get an Obama. Uh, Medicare attack, we were going to get it anyway, which is probably true. But do you think the Romney people have actually neutralized Medicare for the Romney? Oh, no, president? I don't think so. I, don't th I, think they've, I think they've fought back effectively, but I don't think most Republicans, I mean, you, you, you have a thought on this too, but I don't think most Republicans think this is a winning issue. They can neutralize it maybe, but I don't think any of them think I it's think a winning issue. I think the goal is right them. now is to fight to a push. I right. think if you look at the polling that they had, when they polled on this before they introduced the Ryan budget, and the polling was really bad. I mean, these are Republican numbers were saying that even Republicans didn't think that this was a good idea. I think you've seen the needle move a little bit, but it's still not necessarily in their favor. I think what they're trying to do is really blunt the impact. The big question is whether or not it's going to resonate in a state like Florida, where there is a large percentage of, of seniors, or a place maybe yeah. even like Pennsylvania, uh, and they're, they have been inundated with the attacks but the numbers aren't really moving that much. So you used, just use the word attacks. I mean, this is, feel, you're looking, you've looked at this at a mm -hmm. first story this week. This feels like a pretty negative campaign. Most people think it's a pretty negative campaign. I know we all say they're negative campaigns, but in my experience, this one feels more so in sooner. Well, and the thing that seems different about it is you have the principles getting negative yeah. on each other really fast. Not their surrogates. Not yeah. their surrogates. Yeah. I mean, everybody's, everybody's doing it, but also Mitt Romney and Barack Obama are doing it on a regular basis. The president this week, I mean, he was making jokes in Iowa about Romney putting his dog on the, uh, yeah. <laughs> on the roof of the car, you know, to try and talk about as he was talking about so you know, wind energy. <laughs> yeah, but, but the, the, Romney, the Romney basically, <laughs> oh, Obama should, the president should be ashamed of himself and he's demeaning the office. I mean, demeaning that, the office. that's pretty tough for mid-August, it seems to me. Right? <laughs> well, like, where do we go from there? It's like such sour grapes, too. I mean, you basically had a month where all you did was trade barbs about, you know, what, whether Bain was a good thing or whether Bain was a bad thing, whether Mitt Romney yeah. should release his taxes or he shouldn't. And even as the race seemed for a couple of days to shift to more serious topics, I think you still had kind of a knee-jerk reaction on the part both of the main candidates and their staff to say, well, no, we want to linger on, you know. Uh, <laughs> what year did yeah, really exactly. you really <laughs> you know? yeah. Well, but th part of this is, and you and I talked about this earlier, if you have a base election where the, the goal isn't to win over voters in the middle, because there are very few people undecided, but to excite your base, this is kind of what you get. Mm. Yeah, the, I mean, the base loves it, and and for both sides. I mean, one of the, the president this week, when he was constantly, whenever he would make those jokes or whenever he would he would get negative on the trail, I mean, the crowd ate it up. Course, and yeah. and that's what their both of their goals are. 